Hey, this is Coach Mark, and I want to let you in on a little secret. It's okay to be afraid. You heard me. I said, it's okay to be afraid. When you are striving to accomplish some big goal, right, and you really sit down and you start to think about and analyze that goal, and you say, man, how am I going to get this done? Or let's say you're along in the process and you come across a hurdle that you just think that there's no way, no way for you to get over that hurdle. And you just and, and you just don't even know what to do. It's OK. You see, I've studied the most successful entrepreneurs and I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, I deeply study, I read their biographies. And once you kind of go in and read their biographies and see what it is that they had to go through, you realize that a lot of them were afraid too. Right now, I'm reading um, a biography of Phil Knight. And for those of you that don't know, Phil Knight is the founder of Nike. And let me tell you, the name of the book is called Shoe Dog. And I'm not here to promote his book, but it's an absolutely amazing book. I'm actually listening to it on audio. It's just released um, not that long ago. I think maybe a few weeks ago or so. The audio just came out last week, actually, and the book may have come out a few days ago or a few weeks ago or something like that. But it's an absolutely amazing story. You hear how this young guy at age, I want to say 22 or 24, started this company with virtually nothing with absolutely nothing and all the trials and tribulations that he went through. I'm not even, I'm probably about halfway done with the book, right? So the book is, I want to say that he starts his journey maybe about 1962, right? And for the first however many years, it wasn't even Nike. They were forced to um, to start Nike. It, it was actually, he was selling shoes. He was selling somebody else's shoes. He was sh selling um, Tigers, uh, uh, some shoes from a Japanese company called Tigers. I think now they're called the Asics Tiger, Tigers or whatever, but that's what he was selling. And he, he ended up being forced to have to create the Nike brand. I mean, it's an absolutely amazing story. But I'm going to tell you this, man, along the way, this guy, he was terrified so many times. He was so terrified because I can't even tell you like how many times they thought they were going to have to um, shut the business down. They thought they were going to go bankrupt. I mean, it is an amazing story. And what I realized is that, you know what? The, the, the entrepreneurs that we look at now that are billionaires, that are super successful, all of them, all of them were terrified along the way. All of them had points in which it seemed like they were going to have to shut their business down, that they couldn't go any further. But guess what? They figured out a way. Even though they were afraid, none of the ones that I'm reading about decided that, you know what? This is just too much for me. Let me pack up and go home. No Great leaders, great entrepreneurs, they don't do that. They just, you know, even though they're afraid, they just make up their mind that they're going to they're gonna bulldoze their way through whatever it is, whatever hurdle, whatever obstacle, whatever it is that's setting them back. But I'm telling you, man, this Nike story is absolutely amazing. The, the, the book is called Shoe Dog. And I highly suggest for any of you um, that are thinking about starting any sort of business or just wants to hear a really, truly inspiring story. I'm not even halfway done with the book. And I can't even tell you how many times. I think that, you know, the, the story starts about 1962 or 1964. And I'm, I'm, I'm at 1975 right now. Basically, you know, it, it goes through the different years. So I'm not even nowhere near halfway done um, with the entire story. And I can't tell you how many times this guy was like, he, he would come home to his wife and even before he was um, married, would come home and sit and be like, you know what? It's, it's about to be over. I don't know what I'm about to do. Um, we literally have no, I mean, they were, I mean, probably for about the first 10, 12, 15 years. I mean, they were just, you want to talk about living paycheck to paycheck. They were living invoice to invoice to invoice. They were floating money. I mean, it really, really, really seemed like there was no way that they were going to make it. Right. I mean, like there were times where he was just like, man, it, it's going to be over after this weekend. And I got to try to figure out what I'm going to do. Like, uh, you know, I got this family. I got this young family to feed and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do now because the business is going to get shut down and some sort of way he was able to just keep fighting and keep it going. And guess what? Right now, Nike's worth 100 
billion dollars. Their market capitalization is 100 million, no, 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 100 billion with a B, billion dollars, right? And this guy started this company with literally no money. When he started the company, he was living at home with his parents. He was living at home with his parents. He sold his car. He had an MG. He had just graduated from college. I think he had did some time in the military. And before he went out and got a job, he wanted to go ahead and just do some traveling around the world. He went to Hawaii first and was selling encyclopedias. And, um, and he went with a buddy of his and the buddy said, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna continue. I think the buddy met a girl in Hawaii and wanted to stay in Hawaii and wanted Phil to stay in, um, um, in, in Hawaii as well. And he was like, nah, you know what? I got to keep going because he always had this dream of starting up a shoe company. He, he had uh, wrote a thesis paper about it while he was in uh, college and everybody thought it was just a little crazy idea, but he knew that he wanted to get to Japan to explore the idea. He just said, you know what? I'll get a job eventually, but I need to at least explore this idea of me possibly starting uh, my own shoe company. He didn't even, and Nike, I don't even think that Nike even came about for the first maybe eight, eight years or so. It was, he was actually selling somebody else's shoe. Um, it was called the Tiger. He was selling um, Tigers for years before he developed Nike. And it wasn't even his initial plan to even develop Nike. He was forced to de develop Nike because the other company who he was distributing their shoes for was about to cut him out. I mean, it's just an absolutely amazing story. And when you just hear and you understand why these guys got to where they got to, but I'm telling you, he started the company out with literally no money. He, he was living at home with his parents. You know, he just got enough money to, um, to to take this trip. He had gotten a little money from his dad and he sold all his belongings and, and all the money that he saved up over the uh, previous few summers from working. And he took this trip. He got over to Japan, ended up making a deal with the company, you know, and literally didn't have an office, didn't have anything, didn't even have $50 to pay for shipping. Um, uh, for the company to send him some samples back to America. He had to uh, call his dad and have his dad wire $50 down for the company to go ahead and to send him some of these samples. It's, it's just an absolutely amazing story. And when you just hear it and you hear what these guys went through, you know, it's just it's just mind blowing to me. Same thing with Richard Branson. I read Richard Branson's uh, book last year and it's the same thing so many times. Like these guys were like just that close away from having to shut everything down and they just figured out a way how to keep it going. They figured out a way to keep it going. They figured out a way to keep it going. And now like Richard Branson's worth what? Like four or five billion dollars. Phil Knight is worth twenty five billion dollars. I'm telling you. Phil Knight, for the first maybe about 10 years, he was literally living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, you know, running this company. And now the man is worth $25 billion. You know, when you hear these stories, you know why you, you respect their hustle. You respect their grind. You respect everything that they've done, you know, and there's so much that we can learn from it. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you guys check out that book. Um, Richard Branson's book, um, his his biography, that's an also amazing book. But this Phil Knight book that I'm, I'm, I'm going through right now, Shoe Dog, is out, it will blow your mind. And when you realize what these guys went through, what he had to go through day in, day out, day in, day out, the amount of pressure, and, and, and you realize that he was scared, he was trembling the whole time. But guess what? He made up his mind that, that, that he was just he was going to stick it out. And that's what and that's what he did. So I, I want to just let you know that it's OK to be afraid when you're going after like a humongous dream. It's all right. It's all right that you're going to um, come across obstacles. You're going to struggle the first little bit. Right. But it will get better. And, and, and listening to this guy's story or reading this guy's story will give you that hope and encouragement and, and let you know that it will get better as long as you keep moving forward. All right. Check it out. It's called Shoe Dog. It's the story of Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. The guy's worth $25 billion. Started off with absolutely nothing. The company's worth $100 billion. All right? Thank you much, and until next week.